Morning. Morning. I feel bad about last night. That's okay. I forgive you. I didn't apologize. Well, then I guess I'm just a bigger man than you are. I'm kidding. Forget about it. Okay. So what do you want to do with Jake today? I don't know. Uh, how about a barbecue? Well, I'm sure the kid's delicious, but I think I'd rather have hamburgers. Hey, Dad, check it out. Mom bought me new shoes. Ooh, very cool. Yeah, they were really expensive. I'll bet. She said to give you the bill. What? Why do I get the bill? So you can give me a check to pay her back. Why? She doesn't trust me with cash. No, why should I be buying your shoes? You didn't. Mom did. This is so wrong. I mean, I, I send her a child support check every month, which is supposed to include things like clothing, food, shoes. Helen, you're like an Alzheimer's victim in a whorehouse. Excuse me? You're constantly surprised that you've been screwed. And you don't want to pay for it. Morning. Morning. Hey, did you drop off the bag of dry cleaning I left by the back door? That was dry cleaning? I thought you were throwing that stuff out. I threw out my clothes? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I gave it to my sister's husband, Earl. You gave three cashmere sweaters and a brand new sport coat to your brother-in-law? Why shouldn't he have nice things? <laughs> He's had his debt to society. Well, you're gonna have to get him back. I wish I could, but Earl's got that one withered arm and he had all the left sleeves in. Those were expensive clothes, Berta. You want to take it out and trade, stud? Because this back brace snaps off with a flick of a wrist. <laughs> okay, okay, that's the last straw. You have abused my good nature for too long, and I am putting my foot down. Uh-huh. Well, you let me know how that works out for you. Well, I guess we know who's in charge around here. Hey, if I want your opinion, I'll ask your ex-wife. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Well, if I want your opinion, I'll ask one of the dozens of women you have meaningless casual sex with. Oh, ouch. Hey, Uncle Charlie? What? I love you. What did you do, Jake? I love you too, Dad. What did he do, Alan? How the hell am I supposed to know? Well, he's your knuckleheaded son. Oh, he's my knuckleheaded son now, but when you're trawling for tail at the, at the Home Depot, suddenly he's your slow but adorable nephew. Yeah, I might as well get one perk out of having you sponge off me. Sponge? Sponge? Oh, that's a good idea. Well, let me tell you something. Take away your fancy house and your fancy car and all your women, and, and what have you got? A better looking version of you. Have I mentioned how much I hate you? I mentioned how much I hate you. Don't copy me. Don't copy me. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. I'm warning you, Charlie. I'm warning you, Charlie. Wow, how childish. <laughs> Hello. Hi, um, Alan. I remember. Look, I, uh, I needed to come clean about something. I wasn't actually in a bar fight. Um, I took a piece of whole wheat toast to the eye. I mean, it was cut diagonally and, and toasted well, so it was essentially shrapnel. Did some real damage. I see, and why do you feel the need to tell me all this? Well, I, I, I guess I didn't want our relationship to start on a lie. Our relationship? I'll go now. No, no, wait. Sit down. Join me. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to tell me what's bothering you? If you don't know, there's no point discussing it. Fine. You ignored me the whole night. 
I'm at a party where I don't know anyone, and you just abandoned me. Alan, listen closely. It wasn't a real date. That's not the point. I mean, I, I was stuck playing truth or dare with your friend Eric and nine producers from Will and Grace while you were having a wonderful time talking to his hot ex-wife. I was just being polite. Oh, please. I saw the way you were looking at her. <laughs> what, I can't look? Not when you're supposed to be with me. How many apple teenies did you drink tonight? <laughs> Never you mind about that. So, so what are you gonna do? Uh, out yourself as a straight man so you can sleep with your little Pamela? No, no, that would mess everything up with Eric. Unless I convince him that she temporarily flipped me back to the home team. Oh, if you're gonna go, just go. Alan, eat something, toast, a waffle, anything absorbent. Uh, don't blame this on the liquor. Okay, here's what I can do. She and I are going shopping tomorrow. I'll tell her I'm bisexual and then make my move. So you're gonna cheat on me? No, that's not cheating. How do you figure? Because we're not really gay. <laughs> Then how can you be bi? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, well, good night. Aren't you gonna ask? No. Jake told me. Oh, you poor clueless no. bitch. Never trust a drifter with an eye patch. <laughs> Berta. What? I'm tired, and my hands all red and pruney. I've seen your grades. Get used to it. <laughs> How do I know what I'm done? Don't worry about that, honey. I'll tell you. Oh, for God's sakes, don't kiss him. He's your brother. I have x-rays. Oh, good. Let me see. Oh, golly, no. Only four, doctor. Hey, I'm a doctor. Oh, yeah? Where are you parked? Ellen, you gotta relax. You're harboring the kind of resentment that eats away at your insides until you wake up one day peeing blood and crapping into a bag. Thanks for the advice. You know the difference between you and me? Yeah, I have a functioning liver and somehow you're gonna get laid tonight. Uh, that's ridiculous, Alan. She's an educated professional. I'm probably gonna have to throw a few fancy meals at her first. Oh, boo-hoo, you'll have to wait a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? Anyway, the difference between you and me is that when life gives me lemons, I make lemonade. When you get lemons, you just bite into them and suck them inside out. President Washington, question number one. Have you ever thought of coming back from the dead as a zombie? Um, Jake, I, I don't think that's what your teacher had in mind. Do you want to do it? No, no, I'm doing fine. Question two. Can you eat human flesh with wooden teeth? Uh, hi, Lorraine. Um, I'm running a little late. Uh, could you move my 9.30 to 10, uh, my 10 to 10.30, and, well, you see where this is going. You don't? But, uh, hang on, I've got somebody on the other line. Hello? Oh, hi, Mom. Uh, look, I, I can't talk right now. I'm driving Dick to school. Well, Judith's in Hawaii. No, that does not make me a doormat. <laughs> Patsy is just another word for doormat, Mom. I, I, I gotta go. I'll call you later. Uh, hi, Lorraine. I'm back. No, no, don't put me on hold. Oh. Question three. Do you think the Revolutionary War would have been won sooner if you had an army of the undead? <laughs> actually pretty easy. Uh, Lorraine, this is Dr. Harper. I, uh, listen, I, I'm going to be there in about 40 minutes. What do you mean you're going home? Oh, come on. You were premenstrual two weeks ago. Yes, I keep track. Question number four. What's your opinion of the new faster walking zombies? No, no, no. L Lorraine, don't cry. Please don't cry.
read the book report for me. No, Jake, that would be wrong. The only way to learn is to do the work yourself. Now, these are called cliff notes. <laughs> Inside is everything you need to know about Lord of the Flies. The themes, the characters, the symbolism. It's basically a book report waiting for you to put your name on it. Wow. Is that legal? Look around. Do you see any homework police? <laughs> oh, man. I give you way too much credit. <laughs> Oh, I meant to ask you, how'd that book report turn out? I got a D minus. D minus? Didn't you read the cliff notes? It was 50 pages. <laughs> Unbelievable. Your kid's too lazy to cheat. Has it occurred to you that maybe he's too honest to cheat? No, I'm lazy. <laughs> hey, it's on! Version. What can I tell you? A network like that one better. What are they brain damaged? Welcome to show business, kid. I still think it's snappy. God, Alan, you're like a machine. <laughs> I'm a love shark, baby. If I stop making love, I drown. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Growl. All right. Uh, I'm a love bear. Oh, if I stop making love, I prevent forest fire. <laughs> uh, put that out. Man, 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 man. Man. Morning. Morning. I see you've been working out again. Yeah, well, it's good for my heart. I figure the liver damage makes it kind of a push. <laughs> Morning, all. Morning. Morning. Zippy's getting his freak on. Yeah, it seems we're living in an age of miracles. I guess if they can put a man on the moon, they can put a woman on your brother. <laughs> Who's the girl? I don't know. He met her at the supermarket. Helped her pick out corn. Corn? Huh. Well, I'm not in any position to judge. I once did a guy for a tank of gas. <laughs> Hey, look who's here. Hey, Dad. Hey, aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Apparently not. <laughs> Do you see how rude he is to me? Yeah, it's terrible. I'll talk to him. I wish you would because... Wait, wait, Alan. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Alan, have you been bad-mouthing me? Uh, bad-mouthing you? Uh, to, to, to whom? To Jake. Oh, to Jake. No. Why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> His attitude towards me lately is so disrespectful, I have to wonder where he's getting it from. Well, I can assure you, I, I always make it a point to speak well of you in front of our son. What about your brother? Oh, with Charlie, I'm completely honest. <laughs> that is not what I meant. I know. Hey, Judith. Charlie, have you said derogatory things about me to Jake? No. Why, did you want me to? I don't understand why he's behaving like this, ignoring me, avoiding me, acting like I'm the enemy. But you get why I'm doing it, right? <laughs> I got it! Well, Judith, I don't know what to tell you. He's certainly not getting his attitude from us. Absolutely not. It's your mother! 
You talk to her. Hell no, I talked to her last time. Choose you for it. Odds. Once, twice, three, shoot. Odds, you gotta talk to her. No. Hey, but you said you were I gonna... lied. <laughs> Leave a message at the beep. Beep. <laughs> I, I, I wish there were a better way to deal with Mom. There is, but we're both too pretty for jail. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven. Are you decent? Yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> What's up? Nothing. Just came in to say goodnight. Three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Oh. Why? Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, nothing. You just seemed a little stressed out before, and I was concerned. Oh, thanks. You're a, you're a good brother. Three, four, five, six, seven. You do that every night? Are you kidding? After every meal. Three, four, five, six, seven. You are tightly wrapped, aren't you? The price of healthy gums is eternal vigilance. God, I can't do this anymore. Do what? I have to tell you something. Okay. Come on out in the bedroom. All right. What are you doing? You'll understand in a minute. Uh, I thought you had to tell me something. I do. There is no bad Alan. I'm the one who stole the silly putty and put it in your pocket when you weren't looking. Three, four, five, six, seven. Damn you to hell! Come out here and die like a man! What do you know? There is a bad Alan. What kind of a father are you? Hey, I am a good father. The minute he threw up, I canceled the trip. But you were planning to take my 11-year-old child to Las Vegas. It's really a family town now. <laughs> the mob hardly has any influence at all anymore. Oh, good, Charlie. That helps. When were you planning on telling me about this trip? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Oh, oh good, Jake. That helps. Honey, why don't you go lie down? Why? I'm fine. Uncle Charlie, is it too late to get our beds down with Coop? What beds? Who's Coop? Go lie down. You're delirious. <laughs> Listen, Judith, I don't think you understand the true ramifications of what's going on here. Oh, really? Yeah. You see, this trip was my idea. I'm shocked. Let me finish. You see, I wanted to cheer Alan up because... Charlie, don't. It's personal. She has a right to know. Judith, Alan got some bad news from the doctor yesterday. Oh, my God, Alan. What is it? Well, the doctor says I have to have a colonoscopy. Are you having problems? No, it's just routine. So? So I'm, I'm really nervous about it. That's it? Well, it's a long, snaky thing with a camera. Oh, please. Your son was 10 pounds at birth, and his head was the same size it is now. That's kind of apples and oranges, isn't it? Goodbye, Alan. Wait, 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 Judith. Aren't you going to take Jake with you? No, I'm not taking him. He's fine. And, and, and don't think I don't see what's going on here. You put Jacob to tell me he's sick so you could pawn him off on me while you went gallivanting off to Las Vegas. Well, he did throw up. Smell the umbrella stand. I'm not buying it. I'll be back to get him Monday night. And if I find out you went ahead and took him to Vegas, you'll be getting a colonoscopy from my attorney. I've seen your alimony checks. You already got one. So what's the deal? Are we gone? I don't think so. Why? I'm fine. Yeah, but your mom said no. Oh, man. Don't eat anything orange. <laughs> you want to know what I think? Not at all. I think if she wanted to keep you on a leash like a neutered poodle, she shouldn't have divorced you. I am not on a leash. I would never was on a leash. You were living here for three weeks before you were comfortable getting up on the couch without permission. <laughs> Can we just drop it? It was a bad idea. There are no bad ideas. There's just a lack of will to execute them. <laughs> We're men, Alan. Single men. We go where we want, when we want, and how we want. 
usually without so much luggage and toiletries, but I'm trying to be flexible here. I explained about the toiletries. The point is, you can't let your ex-wife control your behavior, no matter how stupid or self-destructive it might be. Oh, Charlie, I have What to... profit a man if he escapes the iron shackles of matrimony, only to surrender to the sexually frustrated tyranny of a vengeful ex-wife? <laughs> You know what? You're right. We're men. Damn right. Are you with me? I'm with you. Then grab your fanny pack. We're going to Vegas. <laughs> Jake? Just a sec. <laughs> That's okay. It's mostly water. Men. All right, contestants. We are at the final round. The questions are worth more, and the answers are harder. <laughs> True. <laughs> for a question. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Name three changes in American life brought about by the Industrial Revolution. Eh, population shift to the cities, employment moving from farms to factories, and... Uh... Eh. Yes. Sorry, I hit it by mistake. <laughs> eh, settlement of the West. Ah, that's correct. You are our new champion. Yes. Eh. Settlement of the West. <laughs> See, Jake, you know this stuff. Yeah, I guess I do. No, trust me, you are going to do great on that test. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. No, you're welcome. Now go get ready for bed. I'll, I'll be there in a minute to tuck you in. Okie dokie. <laughs> men, 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 men. Well, well, well. Alan. Oh, you remember me. What are you doing up so late? That's funny. I was about to ask you the same thing. Don't tell me you were waiting up for me. This isn't about what I was doing, Judith. No, no. This is about what you were doing until... Now. I told you I had a date. You said you were fine with it. <laughs> In theory... I was. In practice, I think we can both see I'm not. But what did you want me to do, Alan? Sit here all night and do nothing? Why not? It was good enough for me. You know what? You haven't changed at all. You're still the same neurotic, overbearing control freak I threw out a year ago. <laughs> neurotic? Maybe. Overbearing? Perhaps. But you know what? You're not going to throw me out again because I have changed. Tonight, I'm leaving you. <laughs> As it turns out, a distinction without a difference. What's that? My high school yearbook. Hey, uh, do you remember a girl named Jamie Eckleberry? No. Yeah, sure you do. She used to hang out at the house all the time. Oh, yeah. Eckleberry Hound. Not a name she was fond of. Yeah, I didn't make it up. I just spread it around. What about her? Oh, she called the Alumni Association and tracked me down. How does that work? They let her sniff one of your sweaters? She emailed me. She's in town on business, and I invited her over. Great. I'll get out of your way. Just keep her off the good rug. Very funny. No, for your information, it's not a date. She's just a friend who, by the way, has become very successful in her field. Oh, that's nice that she has a field to run around in. It's getting old, Charlie. In people years or dog years? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, look. You remember Miss Hanrahan? Oh, sure. I, I had her for sophomore English. I had her in the teacher's lounge. <laughs> That's Jamie. Be nice. I'm always nice. Ask Miss Hanrahan. I'm serious. Relax. I'm just going to say hello, scratch her behind the ear, and then I'm out of here. <laughs> you done with the dog jokes? Yes. Good. I hope she looks fetching. <laughs> okay, I guess I had one more. Alan. Jamie. Woof. <laughs> Pro, no alimony. Con, no sex. 
Pros see Jake all the time. Cons see Judith all the time. What are you doing? Give me that. I'm sorry, I was just laying there. That's private. Okay. I got another pro for you. Yeah? What's that? If you hook back up with olive oil, I won't have to scrub your toilet anymore. Pro. No more Berta. You're not really thinking about going back, are you? I don't know. She wants to, but I'm torn. You're not torn. You're gutless. Do you still love her? Of course I do. I mean, you know, we, we've been through a lot of things together. She's the mother of my son. Okay, listen to me, Zippy. If that's all it took to make a marriage, I have a husband for each one of my tattoos. You have tattoos? Yeah, you wanna see them? Uh, no, uh-uh. Look, you're overthinking this. When your dog dies, you don't make a list. You bury him, plant a shrub on top, tell the kids he's running around the farm, and move on. Huh, that's actually a, a very apt metaphor. My, my, my failed marriage is like a dead dog, but it serves as fertilizer for the shrub, which represents my new life. So if I try to revitalize the marriage, you know, digging up the dog, then I'm killing the shrub, which is me. Like you said, it's apt. <laughs> Thank you, Berta. You're a very insightful woman. I know. In a just world, you'd be washing my shorts. Well, thanks nevertheless. Last chance to see those tattoos. Oh, thanks. I can make the Roadrunner do jumping jacks. Jake, wait till we get inside. Uh-uh. I'm hungry. Uncle Charlie's in there. I see your point. At the risk of asking a foolish question, you got any homework this weekend? Nope. Did it at school. Really? Yep, did during detention. Jake? Why did you have detention? Because I didn't do my homework yesterday. So you did yesterday's homework and today's homework? Yep, the extra credit section and everything. Oh, great. I'll, uh, I'll look it over. Okay, I didn't do it. Jake, why do you keep lying? Because I thought you trusted me. <laughs> the detention part was true. <laughs> Charlie? Hey, Rose. What's going on? I just stopped by to say I'm sorry things didn't work out with you and Sherry. Yeah, thanks. And I'm sorry for my schadenfreude the other day. I've been riddled with Glaukenstücken ever since. <laughs> Glauken... Stücken. It means feeling guilty for having felt schadenfreude. <laughs> They've got a word for that? Not yet, but I'm hoping Glaukenstücken catches on. I'll do my part. You know, something good did come out of all this. Watching you obsess over Sherry really helped me understand my obsession for you. I mean, you never return my calls, you always see other women, you never knowingly let me sleep over. And yet, I've never been able to get you out of my head. Interesting. Isn't it? But now that I understand it, I feel somehow free of it. Well, that's great, Rose. That sounds like a real healthy breakthrough. Yeah. And the best part is, now that the fog of obsession has lifted, I can stop idealizing you and see you for who you really are. And who would that be? An emotionally scarred and deeply flawed human being. Who will, one day, bless me with emotionally scarred and deeply flawed children. Rose. Shh. Just hold me. I like the names Mike and Trudy. So this is pretty cool, huh, Jay? An electric car. I guess. What happens when the batteries run out? You plug it in and recharge it. Yeah, but what if there's a blackout? Then you sit in the back seat with a loaded pistol and wait for the looters, just like any other car. Charlie? 
It's a cool car, Jake. Greg has a really cool car. He has a Hummer. You know, your Uncle Charlie's no stranger to Hummers. Charlie? That's a cool car too, Jake. So, Jake, this is pretty cool, huh? Driving in a futuristic car, going to see a movie. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, uh, maybe afterwards we can uh, go get some pizza. Sure. And then, who knows, maybe, uh, maybe your old dad will buy you an excessively violent and bloody video game. How's that sound? Okay. You know when we go scuba diving, Greg's gonna teach me how to steer his boat. Well, I am sorry, Jake, but, you know, I, I don't have a boat. I, I don't have a Hummer. And, and I don't know how to scuba dive. It's okay, Dad. Greg does. <laughs> hey, Jake. How'd you like your dad to teach you how to drive a car? What? Really? Dude, oh, Charlie, he's 11. Yeah, so? We'll find an empty parking lot somewhere. What if he hits something? Alan, it's Mom's car. <laughs> Guess what? Daddy's gonna teach you how to drive. Cool. Men, 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 men. Can you uh, reach the pedals? Yeah, can we turn on the radio? Forget the radio. Which button's the window squirter? Okay, forget the squirter. Now, come on, focus. Now, this is your rear view mirror. It's very important to check it before you back up. Okay. Now, you, well, what do you see? The top of Uncle Charlie's head. A uh, shopping cart, a tree, soda can. Looks like Mountain Dew. Okay, forget the rear view mirror. We're just, we're just gonna go forward. Now, you know, this is the brake, and this is the gas. Thought it was electric. He's got you there, Alan. Okay, this is the brake and this is the electric. <laughs> now, they're very, very, very sensitive, so you don't have to press hard. Okay. No, I should give it a little tap. Is it on? No. Brake! 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 Okay, apparently it is on. Oh, this is awesome. Now, you see how careful you have to be? Uh-huh. And how much closer we are to the dumpsters? Can I squirt the windows now? No, no. Okay, why don't you turn the wheel slightly to the left and very gently press down on... Getting weirder. Hey, buddy. Why aren't you asleep? I'm hoping I am. Hello, Jake. Hello, Miss Pasternak. <laughs> uh, listen, buddy, Miss Pasternak and I are kind of having a sleepover. Because we're like, you know, friends. No way. <laughs> Jake. I'm only your teacher from 8.15 to 3 o'clock. After that, I'm just a person like anybody else. Oh, this is more wrong than the time I saw Santa peeing at the mall. <laughs> okay, why don't we wrap up this after-school special and call it a night? Don't worry, Jake. This won't change anything between you and me at school. So you're still gonna be mean to me? <laughs> That's right, same old junkyard dog. Oh, buddy, get some sleep. Oh, well, yeah, like I'm gonna sleep now. <laughs> You think he'll be okay? Sure. He's just not used to seeing his teacher out of the classroom. And her pants. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll talk to him in the morning and make sure he's okay and that he keeps this to himself. Thank you, Charlie. Oh, Miss Pastor. How come you never call me by my first name? I don't know. This just seems way hotter. <laughs> Charlie? Yes, Miss Pasternak? Do you think Jake believes we're just friends? Why not? We are, right? I mean, once I get to know you better, I'm pretty sure I'd consider you a friend. Charlie, we both know there's much more than friendship going on between you and me. Much more? How much more? Well, I know this is pretty quick, and I don't want to use the L word. Good, thank you. This feels an awful lot like love. 
I'm sorry, which L word didn't you want to use? <laughs> I'm Charlie. Come on. Let's go to sleep. Yeah, like I'm gonna sleep now. <laughs> Alan, you really don't have to do this. Hey, hey, I am a licensed chiropractor. If Jake had a sore throat, I'm sure you'd treat him, prescribe something. I know, but it's nothing. I think I just slept wrong. Wow, that's probably because you're not used to our bed. <laughs> so, uh, so have you, uh, have you met Judith's parents? No. Oh, they are just gonna love you. Uh, they were devastated by the divorce, not to mention some of her uh, unfortunate choices thereafter. Unfortunate choices? Oh, uh, you know, that's, that's not important. What's important is they're just gonna be relieved to see she's dating a man. Oh, you carry a lot of tension up here. Helen. Didn't you just pay your alimony? This is the pediatrician's bill. Jake was sick? No, no. The pediatrician had to see an orthopedist. <laughs> hey, did you know that mom's birthday was a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I sent her some flowers and a card. Man, would it have killed you to put my name on the card? As a matter of fact, I did put your name on it. I, I wrote, uh, love, your sons, Alan and Charlie. Damn. What? She tricked me into thinking I forgot. <laughs> the snap, the kick is up, and it is good! It is good! Hey, Anna. Okay, well, that's the game. Dad, can my allowance? <laughs> sure. Here. Thanks. Here. Pleasure doing business with you. Wait, you're taking my son's allowance on a football bet? Hey, when he wins, I pay off, you know, minus the VIG. But minus the VIG. You're charging him for the privilege of making a bet. That's what the VIG is, Dad. Duh. Let's face it, he's not going to learn this stuff in school. I don't care. Give him his allowance back. Fine. You get no allowance. That's your punishment for gambling. Told you he'd do that. Yeah, you did. Well, you're doing business with you. Hey, listen, after you drop him off at his mom's house tonight, do me a favor. Just make yourself scarce, okay? What's her name? Or is it too early to ask? It's not a girl. I'm just having some friends over. Oh. Oh, poker? Oh, can I play? I'm a lot better than I used to be. It's not poker. Wait, a flush beats a straight and a full boat beats a flush, right? Right. And a full house and a full boat are the same thing, so I promise I won't say full houseboat anymore. It's not poker, Alan. Oh, and what's going on? I'm just having some friends over to smoke cigars, sample some fine single malt scotch, and, you know, talk. I enjoy all those things. But well, scotch makes me a little gassy, but I'll take a Beano and I'm good to go. It's nice, but I don't think you'd be comfortable. Why not? Because we talk about personal things. Oh, you mean like uh, like a support group? No, 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 no. It's not a support group. It's just a bunch of guys who get together every couple of months to talk about their lives. That's a support group. No, it's not. Okay, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Got it. So why can't I come? Because these men are my friends. There's a level of trust and confidentiality. I'm your friend. No, you're my brother. Wait a minute. You don't consider me a friend? It's not up to me. <laughs> A friend is someone you choose. A brother is someone you get. Excuse me? There's no choice involved. Your dad just wakes you up in the middle of the night and says, your mom wasn't really fat and this isn't your room anymore. So, so all these years I've just been a, an intruder to you? A, an inconvenience? A, a burden? Well, sure, you can spin it that way. You know, I, I had no idea you felt this way. I am very, very hurt. Okay. But you'll still make yourself scarce, right? Don't confuse him. He just learned how to use a fork. Real funny, Alan. Alan? What happened to Dad? He turned into Benino Mussaroni. The San Francisco tree? It's Mussolini, Professor. He's just upset because I won't let him go to a concert tonight. Why not? Because there's no adult supervision. Oh, don't be such a fuddy-duddy, Alan. He's a teenager. Teenagers don't go to concerts with their parents. 
I'm with Evelyn on this. Well, forget it. You are not going to the concert. Oh, listen to you. Remember when I said you couldn't go to that Peter Frampton concert? You snuck out of the house and went anyway. Really? Mom, no. I was in Martinique at the time, but the housekeeper was beside herself. And, and, and I was severely punished for that, right? Oh, sure. I tried grounding you and taking away TV privileges, but at a certain point, every parent has to accept that they're powerless when it comes to controlling a teenager. Really? No. No, not, not really. P parents are, are powerful, very powerful. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, trust me, I I'm only doing this for your own good. <laughs> What the hell is that? Same thing Grandma did. No, it's not. You sound like you're topping up a fur ball. Yeah, well, I'm making the same point. Did it even occur to you that you could help me with this? I was not put on this earth to help you, Evelyn. <laughs> you're my mother. Yes, and as you never tire of pointing out, not a good one. Hey, Ellen, do we have any snack bars? A uh, right-hand cabinet. Why? Uh, I need something to soak up the booze I'll have to drink to make it through this dinner. <laughs> What's the occasion? My girlfriend is being honored at a banquet tonight. Oh, thought the adult film awards were in Vegas. <laughs> she happens to be a judge. Of the adult film awards? <laughs> no, no, a judge in the Los Angeles Municipal Court. Oh. So, <clears throat> do I look okay? It's a tuxedo. You can't go wrong. Well, I want to fit in. This is a very conservative crowd. Oh. Well, then you can go wrong. <laughs> Thanks. Like, I'm not nervous enough. Oh, sweetheart. If you're nervous, just try one of these. It'll relax you. Oh, perfect. Charlie, you can't just pop a pill without knowing what it is. She just said what it is. Thanks, Mom. Gotta go. <clears throat> Bye, sweetheart. Have a good time with your judge, darling. <sighs> That'll last. <laughs> I think he's really trying on this one. Uh-oh. What? Nothing. <clears throat> I guess I'll just have to watch my DVD of Fantasia on the Natch tonight. Hey, Berta. You're a woman. Where are we going with this, Zippy? <laughs> I was just wondering... What does it mean when someone starts crying uncontrollably after sex? Well, in my experience, it usually means the conjugal visit's over. Right, thanks. What happened? Did you get yourself a weeper? Yeah, yeah, last night. Never seen anything like it before. That's hard to believe. I got it. Hello? Oh, hey, Mom, how are you? Yeah, that was fun last night. No, I'm not doing anything. Why? Sure. I'd love to go shopping with you. <laughs> Great. I'll see you then. <laughs> what? Nothing. Hey, hey. Mom's not that bad. In fact, she's kind of fun to hang out with. That has to be the creepiest thing I've ever heard. You know, I said the same thing to myself just a couple minutes ago. <laughs> oh, boy. Teddy's here. Charlie, Teddy's here. Oh, boy. Hi, Al. You all packed? Are you kidding? I packed last night. I was too excited to sleep. Terrific. Where's Charlie? Uh, out on the deck. Oh, give me a minute. I want to say hi. <laughs> Can I go sit in a limo? Knock yourself out. There's sushi. Sushi in a car? Oh, boy. <laughs> this is your other plans? Not all of them. Later, I'm going to go inside and watch some girl-on-girl -girl porn. Beautiful. Look, I still have an extra ticket to the fight, and there's plenty of room on the plane. No, thanks. Did I do something to tick you off? You know, aside from slipping it to your mother. No, no. It's just I 
prefer not to get involved in her personal life. I'm not asking you to get involved in her personal life. I'm asking you to come to Vegas with me and see a fight. Yeah, but why? I don't know. You seem like a nice guy. Don't you have your own friends? Charlie, when you get to be my age, most of your friends are either married or dead. What's the difference? The dead ones smell up my plane. <laughs> Come on, throw some clothes on and let's go have some fun. Ah, what the hell? Just do me a favor. Let's keep this between us. I want your mother to think that I went on a business trip. No problem. My mother still thinks I went to college. Beautiful. You know what? I just realized something. I am two for two at Judith's weddings. <laughs> what a coincidence. I'm two for two at Herb's weddings. Huh. Okay. What about funerals? Can you beat a three-way in a hearse? No. You have to think about it? It's a gray area. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. We were having sex in the coat room. Haha, <laughs> good one. Listen, one of my groomsmen got food poisoning, so you're gonna have to walk down the aisle with Uncle Fred. Uncle Fred? Is that the only man left? Well, his cousin Trudy. She's pre-op, but she's wearing a very nice tux. Why can't I just walk down the aisle with Charlie? Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, I'm just an innocent bystander at this shindig. Oh, come on. Picture the look on Judith's face when she sees you at the altar. I'm in. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Herb. Herb. Oh, hi. Hey, thanks for bringing him down. Mm. Oh, you look very handsome, Jake. I know. It's a tux. <laughs> okay, well, uh, congratulations. I wish you both a lot of happiness. Oh, thanks, Al. Don't make the same mistakes I did. I won't. She wrote them down for me. Good. All right, buddy. Uh, have fun. Okay. Oh, remember that tux is a rental? Excuse me. Are you Judy's sex husband? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was just dropping off our son. No. Uh, I'm sorry. Do I know you? Oh, no, not really. It's... Herb and I were engaged before he met Judith, so... And you're coming to his wedding? <laughs> yeah, well, we're still friends. Oh, well. How very... California of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I wish him the best. Mm. You know. I have to tell you, though, based on first impressions, I'm not sure that Judith is trading up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and having just met you, I feel safe in saying that Herb's not getting... Hand up for the day. I'll see you in the morning. Hold on, Fernando. I want to talk to you. Yes? Never mind. Good night. Is it a problem? Because I want everything to be perfect for you. You're a good man, and I respect you. You remind me of my sainted father. <laughs> Thank you. He was wise and strong until syphilis made him crazy. <laughs> Again, thanks. Good night. Buenas noches. I thought you were going to get rid of him. Or did you go crazy there for a second? I don't know. I just... I just couldn't. Yeah, I think it's his eyes. It's like they're looking right into my soul. That's what Mom said. <laughs> Women used to say that about my eyes. Really? Because now they're kind of milky and bloodshot. <laughs> Actually, the, the one on the right is starting to look a little lazy. You know, you're right. Okay, okay, that's enough. Come on, Charlie. You can't expect to, to compete with a guy half your age. I am not competing. Well, you shouldn't, because it's perfectly natural. Each generation passes the torch on to the next. The child becomes the hunter. The hunter becomes the revered elder. When you're too old to chase the buffalo, it's time to stay back with the old women and make necklaces. <laughs> necklaces? Or weave blankets, tend the fire, teach the kids to whittle. Those are cool too. They're like badass cows. <laughs> Go ahead, say it. I'm stupid and I got ripped off. No, 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 nobody thinks that. 
wouldn't say no, buddy. <laughs> Charlie. Oh, come on. It's not the end of the world. Look, Jake, sooner or later, every guy gets hustled. Even you? Even me. I remember once when I wasn't much older than you, I spent a hundred bucks on a bag of oregano. Oregano? Your uncle was making spaghetti sauce. Yeah, in a parked car before I went to the Pink Floyd Luzerium show. Thank you. No, the important thing is that you learn something that'll serve you for the rest of your life. What's that? Always buy motorbikes and oregano from authorized dealers. No, no, that is not the lesson. A fool and his money are soon parted? No. Don't run with scissors? Do you mind? Go ahead, I'm down to don't eat the yellow snow. That's not it, is it? No, th the lesson here is that when a little extra money comes our way, we do the smart thing and we put it in the bank where it makes reasonable interest at minimal risk. And then we have it for a rainy day. Do you understand? Yeah. Atta boy. Trust me, there is no better feeling than knowing you have a little nest egg to fall back on. There are at least eight better feelings. <laughs> Charlie! Coming! I mean, okay, I do care about my appearance. Plus, I've got mother issues and a bit of a flair for interior design. You know, sconces, throw pillows, bric-a-brac. But when it comes to penises, I am pretty clear that the only one I want winking at me is my own. Who are you trying to convince here, Charlie? Me or you? You. And then I want you to convince me. Why do you need convincing? What? Well, good question. Thanks. Once in a while, I get a little wood on the ball. <laughs> I mean, it has been suggested to me that all of my womanizing is just my way of overcompensating. And who suggested that? Uh, mostly the women I was overcompensating on top of. <laughs> well, this is a very interesting area, but I'm afraid we're out of time. What? No, no, no. We can't stop here. Well, I have a patient waiting, Charlie. Hold on a sec. Here, go get yourself something to eat. Come back in an hour. Okay, new clock. <clears throat> my mom took my temperature the baby way till I was eight years old. Okay, if I'm not gay, right? Hey. Hey, where have you been? I'm stuck in traffic. Danielle's coming over in a few minutes. Got a shower and change. Wow. You two are going out again? What can I say, Charlie? The girl digs my mojo. When did you get mojo? Scoff if you like, but that woman is entranced by the enigma that is Alan Jerome Harper. <laughs> Unbelievable. Your plan is working. Told you. There must be something wrong with that girl. There must be a lot wrong with that girl. <laughs> well, then it's a match made in heaven. There's something wrong with her, and we know there's something wrong with him. Yeah, and before you know it, he'll move out, they'll get married, and we'll be wondering what's wrong with their kids. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Danielle. Come on in. Thank you. Oh, man. Kid wants to kill me. Why doesn't he just cut my brake line? <laughs> Alan's in the shower. Am I too early? No, no, no. He's been living here for three years. You want a drink? Uh, no, thank you. I'm trying to cut down. Really? Why? Long story. Alan takes long showers. Longer when he's not dating. <laughs> thank you, Berta. So. Tell me your story. Yeah, uh, it's a little embarrassing. Hey, all the good drinking stories are. After a night of partying at the Pomona State Fair, I once woke up on a tilt-a-whirl wearing nothing but a grass skirt and a tiny sombrero. No kidding. 
Still got the sombrero. <laughs> okay, your turn. Oh. All right. Um, the reason my marriage didn't work out, the reason none of my relationships work out, is because I tend to drink a little too much and then do things I regret. And by things, you mean? Men. <laughs> huh. And the occasional woman. <laughs> huh. <laughs> well, as stories go, I'd say this is a good one. <laughs> At least yours doesn't end with a toothless carny offering you a churro. <laughs> you know, I had a feeling you'd understand. But Alan is very sweet. The guys I usually go for, and we're like, well, you. Huh. Anyway, I think I am ready for a nice, normal relationship. No more getting blitzed and falling into bed with the first guy who asks me. Or a girl. <laughs> or a couple. Huh. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, new plan. I'm gonna boink Danielle and Alan's gonna live here forever. Kelsey, <laughs> surprise. Jake, look at Daddy. Look at Daddy. Look at Daddy. Ah, that's my boy. Look at Daddy. Yes, Daddy's over here. Wasn't he adorable? Yeah. Hey, could you rewind to Judith breastfeeding him? <laughs> that was really adorable. <laughs> Especially the part where she does the old switcheroo. <laughs> I miss that little boy. I mean, it seems like only yesterday I could hold him in one arm. He didn't weigh more than eight or nine pounds. He craps more than that now. <laughs> Where did the time go? I mean, his childhood is almost over, and there's still so much stuff I want to do with him. Like what? Well, yeah, you know, father-son stuff. I mean, pretty soon there'll be no more playing catch or riding bikes. Do you realize I've never even taken him fishing or, or camping or hunting? Do you know how to fish or camp or hunt? <laughs> that's not the point. <laughs> I, I, I thought we would learn together. Oh, that sounds good. You and Knucklehead out in the woods taking turns shooting each other in the ass. <laughs> okay, it, it's not so much about hunting per se. Per se, there's an outdoorsy phrase. <laughs> It's about bonding. Before you know it, he'll have no interest in spending time with me at all. Not unless you grow boobs and straddle a Harley. <laughs> all right, look, it doesn't help to whine about it. If you want to get lost in the woods with jerky Gerkenheimer, go do it. My life is just one big joke to you, isn't it? Actually, it's more of a limerick. <laughs> there once was a moron named Al who wanted to camp with his pal. <laughs> Any chance you can go camping in Nantucket? <laughs> Yo, mad props on the sandwich, Dad. This PB&J is off the hook. Excuse me? He's been watching MTV Cribs. <laughs> Kid's a sponge. Or shizzle, my dizzle. Hey, MC Skidmark. Here's something else you left in your pants. All right, I was supposed to mail this. What is it? It's a birthday card Mom gave me to send to Grandma. Oh, God. Today's Mom's birthday. You forgot Mom's birthday? <laughs> Did you remember it? Hey, hey, no one expects me to remember anything. <laughs> When's the last time you talked to her? I don't know, probably when we told her she's a horrible person and nobody likes her. Oh, yeah, that was a fun day. I guess I could save this for next year. No, 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 you'll, you'll give it to her in person. We'll go out, we'll buy her a present, and then we'll bring it to her. Oh, 
Gee, Alan, she hasn't talked to us in weeks. Don't you think showing up with a gift might jeopardize that? We have to go. If we don't show up, we'll never hear the end of it. True that. <laughs> you tell him, poop dog. Yeah, I'm coming with the guy I told you about. The old guy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think he's got a little brother who's old, too. <laughs> I'll ask him. Great, we'll see you there. <laughs> hey, do you think your brother would want to come with us? Alan? No, he's not the type. He'd be miserable going to a dance club at this hour. Wait here, I'll go get him. <laughs> hey, oh, oh, you just missed it. John Stewart made a very clever joke about the budget deficit. <laughs> well, get dressed. We're going dancing. <laughs> yeah, right. Toaster pizza? <laughs> no. Come on, let's go. You serious? Yes. But it's after 11 and I'm all tucked in. <laughs> Too bad. Freaking 9019. Come on, Robin wants to go dancing and I'm gonna need a designated driver. Hey, just because you're making a fool of yourself trying to keep up with a 24-year-old girl doesn't mean I have to join you. She has a 24-year-old girlfriend. Is it dressy dressy or dressy casual? 